Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's, it's Friday. I'm surrounded by interns and, uh, and Richard, and they made the biggest mistake of their life. They said how great Star Wars was. They liked Star Wars. That set Richard off. The Force Awakens. Into a rant. <laughs> the Force, you gotta be more detailed. You can't just like generalize Star Wars and. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, please. <laughs> see, you know, did you see that Star Wars shirt I wore the other day? And, and yeah. the Star Wars shirt, and it has all these white, you know, do, mm-hmm, like yes. stars that's in the Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I wore that the other night to go uh, to the show with my husband, and I walked out, you know, and, and we're walking in the car, and he starts trying to brush off. He thought it was dandruff. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, great. That's what it looks like. So this is a good shirt to wear. You don't have to worry about that. But um, I love I love Star Wars. Uh, the I like the memorabilia stuff. I like all the, you know, that that kind of, and, and the clothes. Um, but don't tell Richard that uh, Star Wars and the Awakening was good because he has all the facts and figures and, boy, and it's look, and he couldn't. It's like he can't wait for somebody just to say something about it. It's like you know, you you've got a black belt in karate, and you can't wait for somebody to pick on you. Just come on, <laughs> come on, bring it. And he just goes off on. So now they they know the two words not to say. Star Wars. Don't say it around him. Around him, he's uh, he's loaded for bear. He knows exactly everything about that. You're listening to the Cindy Cochran show, and wow, what a show we had yesterday. Uh, Joy was here. Joy Sheaf is here. We have Kalina and Kiara Wu as also our interns, and so it's really exciting. And did you knock? What what's that sound? Oh, <laughs> I was like, okay, I can I can hear you. They agreed with me. That's what that was. Oh, shut up. <laughs> We've got. They must be doing construction next door. Um, anyway, so we had a great show uh, yesterday. And Joy was here and was listening to it and. and he just came to see how the show goes because he he's going to start coming on Thursday and Fridays and uh, and helping out. And could you go over there and help them build that quicker? So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right okay. back. <laughs> but um, so anyway, we had Don Wilson call in from L.A. and uh, this this guy. If you missed it, go back and listen to uh, this guy talk about all his memories with Elvis. Elvis took him under his wing when Don's, all of his family was killed in a, a, a crash of the train. A train had run into their car, killed him. And Don's father had known Elvis back in the 50s. So when this happened and Elvis found out about it, he brought him under his wing and was just, uh, you know, he introduced, introduced him to that whole lifestyle and that whole thing that was going on and just imagine being caught up in the Elvis Presley whirlwind of everything and so he had a lot of insight and stories and it was so amazing so much fun and poor Joey had to pick his jaw up off the ground put it back and you know listening to all the names and the places and the people and all that was going on you like that huh Joey? Uh, oh yeah oh yeah I did <laughs> that was pretty cool um and so I just want to thank uh, Don again. He said he was going to get up this morning again and listen to the show, so I, I definitely have to do a shout-out to our L.A. connection. That's what we're going to call him. <laughs> and he said he's a, he'll send uh, celebrities his way. He knows, like, everybody. And he in the pictures on my Facebook, you'll see uh, all different people he knows and famous people. And so it's just an uh, exciting connection. But an- another thing that happened from our guest the day before was uh, KCO. Uh, was there talking to us about a new thing she's going to start doing over Conroe Coffee and showing women how to take whatever they have in their makeup bag and she can, in five minutes, give you a face that uh, is profes- looks like a professional uh, makeup artist has done. So she was doing this five-minute face thing. On the show with us was Carly Krim, and she was our intern, um, like last summer she was here, and uh, and Carly happens to be blind. And... She has asked questions to me during our, you know, relationship that she says, what about this? And when you dream as a sighted person, when you dream, what is it like? What is your dreams like? And I never thought about a blind person dreaming because we dream about things that we've seen and have uh, have come in contact with, people we've come in contact with. So she just brought a lot of awareness to us. And so she asked Casey about the makeup thing because it's really difficult you know, for a blind person to to do that correctly and all and, and ask her questions. Well, Casey went home and got really inspired and said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help 
the blind, blind women, uh, with makeup and give them and show them. And I'm going to figure out the best system to help them be able to put that on and and do it right. She got so inspired. So this has been a great week. You know, we've had we've had a lot of uh, of good uh, guests and uh, and interesting topics. And today it's all about let's meet the interns and we're going to talk movies, not stars. <laughs> but we're going to talk about movies and and I happen to be right on the cutting edge of what's been going on and what movies are out. Uh, I've gotten to see like three in the last week and so I told I told Kiara and uh, Colleen, I said, be, go see movies or look at the movies and see what's going on and we're going to talk movies for sure and then if we have time and see, I'll tell you all this and then you'll you'll help a lot of the listeners that can't stand it when I talk about politics. Too bad. Um that uh, if you keep me talking enough, I'm like the substitute teacher. If you keep her talking enough, she won't give you any homework, or, and I won't talk <laughs> about politics. So um, that's what we're going to try and do today. But I want to say good morning, uh, Joey Sheaf. Uh, say hello. Say hello. 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 Good morning. Very good. You happy to be here? I, I'm very happy to was be here. Was that fun yesterday? It was. It was. Oh, my gosh. It was blowing my mind listening to all of Mr. Don's stories. Yo, oh, my goodness. T- he said to tell you hello. I told him that oh. you were really said, <laughs> Well, tell, tell your intern hello. <laughs> so you're my intern. Um, Sweet. So anyway, and then uh, Kalina. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Kalina. Good morning. <laughs> and you've been here like for two weeks, one week. Is your one week? Yeah, this is my first week. First week, yes. okay. And uh, so so in that one week, don't you think people need to listen to the show at least six weeks before they get it and understand Definitely. what it's yeah. going on? Thank you. That's what I'm, I'm taking. I mean, Rush says uh, six weeks, and so I thought, shoot, that's, you know, If Rush can say, you need to listen to me, Rush Limbaugh says six weeks to listen to me to get what we're talking about and what's going on. But mine's a little more random, I I would say. And so, uh, so she, she, I talked about her sister the first time when I, after I met her and I talked to, talked to, uh, talked to Kalina and we talked about Kiara. And so I said, you got to bring her in. Let's just, you know, it's so much fun to talk to twins anyway. And and you said, well, we're not identical twins. We're fraternal twins. And that means there can be a big difference in the way that you look. But still, but you guys do look like, you know, identical twins. And you say everybody <laughs> says that, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Kiara. Good morning. Are you so excited to be on the show? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I I love it that y'all are on. And I'm going to ask y'all about stories and stuff. We're going to talk about, you know, the twin tricks that happen when, uh, whenever they can fool their friends and all that. And if you ever did that, if your parents ever allowed that to happen uh, or told y'all, did they? Now you don't dress the same, of course. <clears throat> and I think that's outdated. I think a lot of twins quit dressing yeah. alike. Sometimes we accidentally dress yeah, the same. We actually do accidentally. And you don't even know. You don't. You don't. No memos go between no. you or anything no, like that. No, not at okay. all. We've okay. actually put a list together of like, the f- top five or three questions people ask us, and the stereotypes around twins. So, if you want to talk about that, yes, we're going to we're going to do that. Yeah. So okay. well, you've now teased <laughs> about it, and that's great. And so we'll uh, when we come back in in our second uh, segment, we'll talk about that. And Joey is here. Joey, um, the way I met Joey was at church. He was sitting behind me with his family, and we start singing. We sing a lot to the Church of Christ. A lot of singing <laughs> goes on. It's all a cappella. So he starts singing, and oh my, oh my word! I went like, "Who is this?" And I didn't want to turn around real fast, you know, and be obvious about it, but I was. And I turned around and said, "Why aren't you singing in the, uh, you know, the uh, with the choir? Not the choir. We don't call it choir. The, the praise team. The praise team. Yeah. Yes, praise team. You're there, politically correct. Um, <laughs> because you are amazing. Your voice is amazing, and and Joy just took it all in stride and said, "Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that." And uh, uh, that no one's asked me to. Sing. Have they asked you to sing in the in the praise team? Have they heard you? Um, I don't think they had heard me prior to uh, when you and I talked about it. Um, I know that I had helped out a few times. Just like you know, one of the elders would come up to me. He's like, "Hey, Joy, are you a tenor?" I'm like, um, "Yes." <laughs> and he's like, "Great, you're going to be singing on Sunday." I'm like, "What? What? What?" what? <laughs> so um, like, but but, yeah. but your, your the quality of his voice, the character of his voice, and you could do Broadway to pop. It was just amazing. And so I, I thought, this guy has got to do something with that. Well, he, uh, he told me that um, he's in theater and he's in all this stuff. And I went, yay. And then he reached out to me. I was so excited. He said, hey, I'm interested in your show. 
uh, he hadn't see, he hadn't heard the show, but he was interested in the fact that there was a show. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, you have to you know do some binge listening, uh, listen to some <laughs> stuff, and then and then make sure. And, and it's, this is for your your own benefit as if you want to do this so he uh, he did and then he said yeah i loved it and in fact his youth minister was on the show with us and he especially thought you know if uh, he can do it then anybody connor can do it anybody can do it so <laughs> i'll i'll come on i'll come and watch your show so he's uh he's hopefully be here thursday and friday so now we have really young you know experience you're you're experienced but you're you know, not as experienced as I am, right, but absolutely. your experience is so different, and you're in a different world. And I was talking to Clean. I said, "So you know all about the social media stuff, right? You're like really mm-hmm. ingrained." And she said, "Yeah." And it's because you guys are so young; it doesn't scare you. Mm-hmm. How old are you, Joy? Uh, Twenty. Twenty. Okay, that's and you. You're in a senior in high school. Yep. Both. Mm-hmm. Both of you are. See, I almost said, and you are. No, you're both. <laughs> you're twins. They're both Cindy. Get the concept right. Uh, so anyway, it's exciting to have you guys, and it's going to be fun to to talk to you. We got to go to a break now. You know what a break is. We're going to yeah. break now, and uh, we're <laughs> we're going to listen to some uh, PSAs. Those are public service announcements. We'll be right back in two minutes. I'm sure uh, you're listening to Cindy Cochran Show. Don't go away because we got so much more to say. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we are looking for talk show hosts and volunteer DJs for our music shows. Are you interested in having your own talk show on Lone Star, or have you always wanted to live out your dreams of being a music DJ? With the addition of Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and video aspects of our talk shows, we are needing people to grow with us. If you or someone you know might be interested, please contact us online at IRLoneStar.com slash contact us or call the station at 936-647-5747 for more information. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. Wow. We have uh, we've got these beautiful children here. <laughs> to me, your children. Believe me, my age, your children. Uh, but they... Um, there are interns, and uh, there's Joy Sheev and Kalina and Kiara Wu uh, are our interns as well. And they, Kalina and Kiara are twins. And we just thought it would be fun uh, to let them expound on some stuff. And, and Joy, what were you going to ask them? Oh, yeah. No, like, what were these uh, questions that y'all were talking about, the, the average mm-hmm. questions that everybody asks you guys as twins? Oh, okay. So basically a lot of the... The same questions we get all the time. First one being, oh, if I punch you, does your twin feel it? <laughs> yeah, we get that every single year. Yeah. <laughs> Only if she's standing next to me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> if I fall on her. Um, so that, you know, because that's a myth. Is that a myth? Yeah. There's a myth. Yes. If, if one hurts, the other one feels it. You know, and we've been told that in movies, and movies don't lie. <laughs> but that's what they tell us, right? <laughs> that's what we've always heard. But they, but uh, so your friends really believe that. Well, well mostly adults or maybe yeah, adults. teachers <laughs> ask us, and I think because they think, oh, we have like a really strong connection. I think we do, but emotionally, I think is more what they think because usually when we're younger, our mom we're one of us used to cry a lot what if one of us cried the other one started crying yeah i think i don't know what that's connected to maybe they like connected that with physical pain ah yeah. uh, ah uh, okay mm-hmm. so you, some of your teachers ask you that question yeah, yeah. wow and one, one of my <laughs> teachers actually had a oh yeah one of her teachers in sixth grade actually pushed her and like oh did your twin just feel that <laughs> yeah yeah or and what yeah. what school was the <laughs> That teacher wow. did that. The yeah. teacher pushed, or I, he had a plastic knife. He said, "Oh, if I stab you, will your teacher, will your <laughs> twin feel that?" I mean, he's kind of a jokester. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. I, mean, I know, like but when really you tell bad, the story, it was like, "I need to call that school and report <laughs> yeah. that teacher right now." Yeah, it was. Like, I can't imagine that being the first question that somebody asks you. Is, oh, hey, my name's Kalina and Kiara. Hey, if I punch one of you guys, will the other one feel this? Like, not, yeah. hey, nice That's to meet you guys. That's a way to break but, the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of <laughs> it's great icebreaker. We've also been asked like. Which one's smarter? Who's better? So oh, who's weird. better at a certain skill? Who's just better all around? Or it's like wow. you don't ask that question. Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> rude. I would think that'd be under the category of political correct, mm-hmm. not ask, not answering that question. But 
you guys also uh like w- people think the first one born you know is the older one and this is the smarter one who was born first kalina, kalina i was you were so you take on that role uh, that you're the protective sister, that you're the... I mean, it's you're, it's like seconds apart or minutes apart, but still they think... Fifteen seconds apart. Fifteen seconds apart. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me think about, you know, your mm-hmm. mom for a moment there. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you um, you do have, you know, you're supposed to have a protective and because you're older. It's, that's so mm-hmm. funny. It's like, how would a kid know that 15 seconds would make that much difference mm-hmm. in it? But I've, I've heard that discussed. It's so... It's so weird. So that's one of the questions. And when they say these things, what do you, how do you return well, we, that ridiculous statement? We try not to be sound offended because it's an actual question. People don't, they don't know. They want to actually know. Mm-hmm. So we try to just answer as honestly and truthfully like and nice, as, as nice as we can because yeah. we've heard these questions I mean, we're pretty a equal. million times. Yeah, we're pretty equal, but I mean, our mom says that Kalina acts like she's older because she kind of does boss me around. But I, know ah. I say it's strategic delegation. Strategic <laughs> delegation. <laughs> I've got to write that down. That's wonderful. <laughs> I I love that. So, but, but growing up though, uh, did you do anything, or did y'all think about doing playing tricks on people? Or? Um, we thought about it, but I just think we look too different to do to mm-hmm. switch classes or something. Because one time Kiara asked me to take a math test for her, oh. and so I was actually so considering really... it until I realized I don't really I don't want to take that math test again. So <laughs> she's on her own. Yeah. <laughs> You're on your own. That is so. But you really you felt like y'all could probably get away with it, right? No, I don't think so. Well, you know, yeah. did y'all did, did you ever dress alike? Yeah, you did. My parents used to dress, or mom used to dress us alike. Yeah, I see, that's only a mom's fantasy. Like, she has twins, girls, and then she gets to dress them both the same, and it's so cute and all that. And then all of a sudden, they're able to... The same goes for guys, too. Oh, I'm (laughs) I'm sorry. I have a couple twin friends, and when they're growing up, their pictures are pretty great. (laughs) (laughs) Embarrassing. But I think the, the mom would be the one that likes that the most. And then when the twins get old enough to think... What are you doing? I don't want to look like you, you know, because a sibling, mo- most siblings do argue. I, do y'all argue well, very much? Uh, yeah, like, I think any siblings, we do argue. When we were younger, it kind of used to be more physical, and now it's been it's more verbal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you kept trying to test that theory. Does this, I'm going to hit you. I don't hurt. So great. I'm going to hit you more. This is great. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt from that. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe maybe parents told the twins that, like, if if you... If you hit her, you're going to hurt worse. And that started that little theory there. But I think it would be so interesting to uh, to see, like, when y'all get together and did you ever like the same boy? Did you, you know, are your feelings toward people the same? Or do you sometimes you go like, how can you like that person? Or do y'all have difference like that? Or do you always feel the same about someone emotionally? Do you feel the same? I feel like for us, we tend to have the same feelings about a certain person that we meet. Mm-hmm. Or if we don't, we get each other to feel the same way. About yeah. We, we just <laughs> oh, each negotiate other. a See, feeling. This, this I see. Because of this and that. Yeah. So like them. But How I sweet. Think, I think with uh, males or different guys, I think we have different tastes, actually. That's good. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you. Because I thought, oh, if you both like the same guy and you have the same feeling, how do y'all work that out? Because mm-hmm. I, I think that it's intimidating to have two people who look so much alike and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, what? you know can i say this to her and uh is she gonna tell the other one or you know mm-hmm. i like the other one and i want to tell her which and but she likes me what do i do i just think you know look but you you have there is a difference and the more you're with you you know and i sit and talk to you i can see some difference but um but it's it's cool i'm i would play that for all it was worth i mm-hmm. used to you know like when i see the movies about parent trap and all that and i'm like oh yeah those are favorite movie when we're younger yeah really yeah. It's, i love those movies and uh that uh, I would do this. I mean, that would be such a, you know, temptation to do stuff to fool people and all that. But individually, what are your aspirations? Like, what what do you want to be when not when you grow up? But what is it that you're going to be working towards as you once you graduate from uh, high school? Probably maybe major in communications, and I might want to go to UT Austin or somewhere in Virginia because I used to live in Virginia. So I'm not sure yet. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm really interested in film, too. You just are, and, and experience. <laughs> Kiara just said that too. You, mm-hmm. you may. And what do you want? Is that what you want to be? Communications as well? No, more 
I'm really into film production, television production, really any kind of entertainment production. Like, I liked watching movies, but I enjoyed how they were made, right. watching documentaries about how they were made. So I took some classes over the summer in California, last summer. Oh, how and cool. It was wow. a filmmaking class, and we got to make our own movie with a camera and then edit and edit that and I just found editing really interesting I really like doing that isn't that the uh, it's a powerful thing because the editor of anything I mean if you're just doing like a home movie or whatever then you do, do a big movie but you've got a lot of control and, you've, yeah. and you're the one that's going to make that you know make or break it because I've seen editing I, I watch a lot of old movies and and the way that they had to edit you know and you've seen the big machines did you do the editing where you had to splice and all that um, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so you saw the machines, the old machines in the museum that you already spliced <laughs> things. But um, but the way they do them now is just, it's you know, to me, it looks like it's so much easier because of, of the technology that has come along. But a, a long time ago when they would have to do that kind of editing and try and, and put things together, you have to give them a little bit of slack because they would, uh, you know, that was probably pretty hard to do and they were, you know, just turning them out because i would watch i watch old movies and i watch them so intently like i cannot stand when there's a cut made and the people are you know as the director said okay everybody uh like uh, three two one but his one and then they start moving and start walking came you know after the editor had already set the i mean they we see the scene we see the people frozen like they're waiting for the for the call to action, so they get action. But we're already on them, and I'm going like, how could they let that pass by? And I was watching a movie one time where the the guy is in an old house, and it cuts away to the stairs when the guy's supposed to walk down the stairs, but uh, but somebody that was working on the set uh, walks walks into the play, you know into a hole to get away from the the stairs. But you see him, you see him with this. His uh, microphone on and all that, <laughs> and you see it. And this is supposed to, you know, this movie was made like in 1937. It was just amazing to see. I, I just saw one of your crew members. How could you not see that in the cut that you didn't see the guy that was there? So I, I look like that. I look so analytically throughout the movie and at every little thing, and it drives me crazy. And that's why I said if a movie can take me into it, and I, and I'm not having to worry about why did you edit that way? You're this is horrible, horrible pacing. What? then we're good and so i'm i'm really like a terrible person to go to the movies with because i have to comment on they should have never done or, or i'll write the line before they say it I'll, I'll tell my husband he should have said this or he should have said that uh, so and i think that really messes up movies but speaking of movies i did go see last night because you know thursday's a new friday right so now they've got, mm-hmm. you can see the movies on Thursdays. And I hated that everybody started finding out about that because it was so crowded last night uh, because I'm sure Ghostbusters was on and uh, uh, the other new movie that starts Friday. What Did y'all, get, did y'all make the list of what's starting Friday? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. let me have it. So she has so this cutest little book. This is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> I just kind of wrote down the top three or four that right. a lot of people are expecting this weekend. Right. Now You See Me too. It's the sequel of Now You See Me with Magicians. The Magicians mm-hmm. with... Yeah. Dave I saw that Rango. last night, so I get to comment. Oh, okay, yes. Good. <laughs> okay, and what else? Warcraft. Warcraft movies. probably won't be one of my... But I'll have to go see it with my, my grandson. Off of the yeah, yeah. video game? Yeah, World of Warcraft, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's no. no I'm just kidding. It <laughs> yeah, I was looking at you waiting for you to say, say oh something. No, no, they made they made the game. The storylines based off of the first game that they came out in like 1994. Right, right. And then yeah. war, it has really nothing to do with World of Warcraft. Oh, okay. Storyline wise. Oh, okay, yeah, but the, like the the same world and everything. Yeah, there's orcs. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> there are orcs and humans and stuff. Yeah. You know? Same thing, right? <laughs> Basically, and maybe and, I'm completely wrong. Uh, yeah, and our audience probably go like. Mm, scratch that off my list. Okay. <laughs> so, and, then, and what the, else? The Conjuring Two. So Ooh. a lot Conjuring of sequels. Two. A lot of sequels this summer. It, and and Ghostbusters. Did you and say Ghostbusters? No, no, I did not. But I think yeah, it probably came out. I didn't look up. <laughs> I thought it was later in the summer. But. It's probably one you didn't want to see anyway. Um, nope. Okay, when we get back, we got to go to a break right now. And when we get back, uh, we will talk about. I, I'll get to comment on. Alice through the looking glass. I saw that. I know it's been out already, but uh, also I got to go see the uh, 
uh, Now You See Me 2. So don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Cindy Cochran Show. The Cindy Cochran Show. Real Reality Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is FM. That's right. Set your radio dials and your button presets to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 coming in June of 2016. To celebrate this edition and the addition of video versions of our talk and music shows on YouTube, cable TV, and Our City TV, we are offering special sponsorships rates, which include free audio spots that are played throughout our broadcast. Interested? Check out our sponsor rates for shows just like the one you're listening to online at IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor or call the station at 936-647-5747. Reaching the people of Montgomery County with Montgomery County's community radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. The Cindy Cochran Show. The first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. Oh, yes, we are. I've been uh, trying to read the uh, Facebook messages. And my good friend Dennis wanted to ask the interns this question. Um, They want to know how long, how often, and for how long do interns work at the station? I assume they work for more than your lame show so um thank you dennis for that i appreciate that and (laughs) listen these guys were chomping at the bit to be able to just be in the atmosphere of the cindy cochran show because they learn so much there's so many things going on and uh and it's you know it's not just listening to country music and there's nothing wrong with that i think that's great i I certainly applaud and uh, no but there's so many good shows on uh, our lone star theater I are Lone Star Community Radio. That's what we are now. Uh, but we get to go big time starting in July 18th. July 18th. July 18th. 104.5 and 106.1. I have to say it like it's a... I have to say it in a radio voice. <laughs> You're going to be listening to 104.5 and 106.1. Your Montgomery County Community... Whatever. Uh, radio. There's such a long title. It's just like... It's radio. It's going to be fun. It's going to be FM... And I can't, I can't wait. July 18th is going to be great. You can get in your car, jump in your car, and ride around. And that's what we'll do with the interns. Let's make them ride all around Montgomery County and uh, and listen to the show and tell us what it's like. <laughs> It'll be <laughs> wonderful. But uh, I don't know. How long do you think you guys will be able to put up with us, our, our work here? What are, What is your contract, Kalina? Oh, I'm going to be here for about two weeks. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Two months. Uh, two weeks? No, You're going to be here yeah, two weeks? Two weeks yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, uh, you better learn fast then. Mm-hmm. That's a, no. Well, there's so many people coming in all the time. I yeah. feel like I've, I've learned a lot in just the couple of days I've been here. There you go. See? Plus, See? I'm like the greatest teacher ever, Cindy. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, sure. laughs> Oh boy, not for not for sixty seven year olds. Yes, no. Maybe for little kids that, like this that can you know can pick up on that stuff. When when Richard teaches <laughs> you something, said, and how do I get to? And could you show me? And he goes, okay, see that you click on that, and then when you go over here, you click on that, and click on it, and and I'm going like, about, about, could you slow that down? Slow your roll, and um, that he wants to teach, and he wants to teach the computer and technology to seniors, not senior citizens and <laughs> he wants to do that and and do a class on that and i think if i signed up he would i would be rejected but anyway i i mean because i i was brought up in the, this industry and i edited but it's all everything's old you know in like two weeks everything can be old you know and, and so you have Wonder to learn a whole that's new why thing. i said that class should be available to people because i said i feel like when i hit the older age i'm going to need a class because mm-hmm. the younger people are going to be doing something I don't understand, and I understand that that's going to happen. Why can't you so have that I kind liked, of? I like to prevent that from happening because I enjoy knowing what's going on. Yeah. Okay, and that was. I'm very... just convinced you don't enjoy it, so I'm. <laughs> no, no, I, I just, I just wish you had that you kind can't of understanding use your age as an excuse, Cindy. I have to throw the age card down because it's the only. I, I thought maybe you could relate me with your mother and how would you want somebody to talk to your mother or teach your mother that's all i was trying to or grandmother or sure. whatever i would be to you but um but that you would you would be so kind and did you get that do you understand that do you want me to do that again oh no 
Oh no, it's not with that attitude that you do it with me, anyway. Well, so because you think I should know better. We've had a history of me explaining things to you in a nice way, and then it goes into an angry way, and then a frustrated. We go through like the seven cycles of emotion when trying to teach you, Cindy. <laughs> so I, I don't know what else I can do besides sitting down and creating a tutorial video, <gasps> and that way you can keep going back to it. But to me not worth it i probably wouldn't find it that's why i ultimately say if you want me to do it you just go richard you do it and then i'll do it wait that's all i have to say yeah i told you several times you you got a guest coming in let me know who it is Mm -hmm. and contact give me the contact information and And i will i'll handle everything but you don't let me know who's coming in until about five minutes before the show and i'm like (laughs) well it is not going to work that way is it cindy (laughs) Well, I no, I did not realize that. I don't know where no, I was when you said that. Sometimes is not the way to describe it. The word is frequently. Did did you? So there's still room that you sometimes do it, but it's more frequent that you don't. That is so mean. I've been trying so hard to catch up on all my stuff because we're getting ready to go FM and and get stuff. You're done doing good. And ready. I think your show's really good. Well, thank you. And see, that's what I mean. It's like, if, but is the content okay? I mean, like when I open my mouth and say some things. Can you give me? But no, he throws shade. Every though, shade is cold in here. Uh, but well, he I just tries. Want you to do better. I, I know because you could be so much better. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's a good thing to have goals in life. <laughs> so oh, much shade brother, being thrown right now. So much. Are you <laughs> cold? Incredible. I'm shivering. It's terrible in here. So uh, okay, this is coming from a good place too, Cindy. This isn't. I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't think you could be have a better show. Oh boy, Does, that's the justification in a positive way. And that's the justification always yeah. for telling somebody. It's He's saying because, it with love. because I care so much about you. Well, ultimately, I could just turn you're off right. your mic. I could. Yeah, and you if could. I, do if that. I really didn't care, I'd be like, yeah. you know what? Don't come in tomorrow. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. And I've done that before to people. So you have? Yeah. You said don't. You just said don't come in tomorrow. I just don't worry about. No, well, the way I like to put it is take a break. Uh, and yeah. if the show, if a show, if a person really cares about, it, they'll come back. Yeah, but yeah. you know they're still taking a break, aren't they? So we are so transparent. I here, say so. face, and then that kind of stuff. Yeah, but we're so transparent because we want you to know behind the scenes as well. You know, well they're learning right now with this conversation. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can ha- you can be you know pleasant and ch- see. I think it's the way that you you talk to me. Sometimes you talk to me. Like I'm like I'm like a kid, and I love that. But when you talk to me like I'm an adult, and he, you're such, he has never said you're such an idiot. It's he does kind ways of saying you don't know what you are doing. What's wrong with you? But uh, but I love Richard, and Richard is great. And Richard here has started something from scratch and just has built this up, and now we're going FM, and just within. You know, within the year, that, that's amazing. So he's done a lot of stuff and a lot, a lot of good for this community. It's me I want to pay more attention to and <laughs> appreciate and respect. I'm your elder. You have to, res- you have to respect me, don't you? No. It's <laughs> a, a great attitude. Yes. Anyway, so we were talking about movies, and I saw uh, "Now You See Me Too" last night. It, it was. I liked it. I mean, I liked everything. Uh, it's a good popcorn movie. I didn't even see the first one, but I like this one. I mean, it stands alone, so I'm sure if you saw the first one, you would you would get it. But, but I like the magic stuff and all that, and they've, they've had a lot of good movies that where there's magician based on uh, someone being a magician. And I, I, I like all that. Sam, not so much. I thought he liked. I thought he was liking it. My husband. I thought he was liking it. And so we're walking out, and he goes, that's the worst movie I ever saw. And I went, what? I said, you didn't like any of Not anything. That was like two hours of torture. And I went, oh, well, I liked it. He said, how could you like it? Yeah, they make me feel that I, I liked it. I said, I liked it. I just, there's a lot of stuff I liked about it. And he goes, no, no, no. The acting was like a high school play. And so that was two people that saw it uh, sitting right next to each other and saw totally different you know different things wow. but okay have you ever been in a, in a theater where the it's, it should be starting they don't open the curtains and the movie is started and we're looking at it through a curtain and stuff and you're you know somebody's got to get up and go tell someone that something's wrong have you ever been in a movie yes. like that no no yeah i don't think a you, movie. you've never been in a you know sitting in a theater and something happens and uh they don't turn the lights off or they're you know something goes goes wrong and everybody sits there 
Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, I'm the first one to jump up and go tell them, look, you got this problem or that problem. But sometimes I'll sit there and say, is anybody going to get up and go tell? So are we going to sit here? Well, the smart like thing to do, Cindy, is you wait 15 and then you let it, let it happen and then go. And then mm-hmm. after the movie, you go, I need a refund. Okay, so let me tell you what happened last <laughs> there night. There you go. There uh, you go. Uh, we walk up, and, and uh, I felt it was a little a little bit warm. And I see a lady fanning herself, and we go up, and I, we sit behind them. And so the movie starts, and, and I'm just going like, this is ridiculous. This is really hot in here. Why is this so hot? And uh, so, of course, nobody gets up. So, so I told Sam, I said, I'll be right back. And he goes, what are you going to do? I said, I just, I got to tell them it's warm. You don't think they know it's warm in here? No, they do not. So I get up and I go and then I find the manager. And I said, excuse me, I just want to tell you that, that there's something wrong with the AC in, in 12. And he said, uh, okay, well, I'll get right to that. And I know what that means. So the guy that's taking it, that was uh, working behind the candy counter and was standing there just not doing anything. I said, would you mind going with me? And I want to show you the difference between you when you walk from the hallway into the show. And he goes, uh, okay. So I took it with me. and I said, see how cool it is? It's cool here, right? Everything's cool right here. Okay, we walked in the door. And then we started walking up the, you know, to get to where the, the actual screen is. And you step into the Hadean world of this. It's just like inferno. I, I said, is the it's like they have the heater on. He goes, you know, you're right. Yeah, this is weird. This is, yeah, okay, all right. Uh, well, I'll go tell him. I said, please just tell him what you experienced. He goes, okay, I will. So a little bit later, I started feeling it was cool, like they turned the AC on. Then it went back to warm again. I was like, good grief. I'm not going to get up again. I want to see the rest of the movie. So we're going out, and the manager's standing there handing tickets to everybody that goes out. That goes out. I said, this this is a great thing to do, smart manager. And so now we've got two tickets to go back and, and see, you know, see another show. And wow. so that was, that was smart. And that's what you said, Richard. You know, they need to, you need to get your refund. And I will do that sometimes if, it's, if, if I can hear the movie next door, they've got it too loud, and it's interrupting my movie. You know, but people won't get up and complain. I don't get that. And you pay, what, half a year's salary to go see the movie in the first place, and then, and then if you don't get every minute of it being you know satisfactory i got a question for your guests oh, okay or two part two questions first is do y'all like going to the movie theater yeah. yes yeah oh yeah yes and <laughs> my next question is when it comes to movies like now you see me too do you feel your gener- your generation is getting a lot of sequels to things that weren't part of your generation like star wars ghostbusters things like that I, to me i don't know why they made a sequel to how to see me because I don't think the first one warranted at all, or even asked the question. Uh, we need to make a sequel, don't we? Yeah, no, I was actually just thinking about that. It's like the first movie sort of left off, you know. Okay, the story's done; it's over. You know, no more. Mm-hmm. And then when they made the second one, I was like, well, how are they going to make a two-hour movie out of well, out of nothing? Well, like, my theory about it is <laughs> is Hollywood has a formula right. where they have an ensemble cast, oh, yeah. and they need to have some type of movie with an ensemble cast in it. And that's just kind of like Ocean's Eleven. They're remaking Ocean's Eleven again. They no, with, they're not. They're really? With, no, all, they're with not. all women. And what? Yeah, really? I'm, to- I, I'm totally serious. I was reading about it. What, what more importantly with Ghostbusters and Star Wars? I know y'all are Star Wars fans. Mm-hmm. Tell me, all three of y'all are, correct? Yes. 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 So tell me, if you don't mind, each one of y'all, tell me when's the moment you saw Star Wars and were interested in it. Well, oh. <laughs> when I was 10, we saw, Clean and I saw... We were eight. Oh, eight. Sorry. <laughs> I was just Sorry. telling her that we were eight. Well, same difference, whatever. <laughs> so we saw <clears throat> episode four, A New Hope, and I was really interested in that. Like, I was hooked on the story right away. What version? Just, I'm not interrupting, just wondering. What? What version of episode four? The, oh, the newer one, not the old Okay. One. I was wondering. Uh-huh. So I watched, <laughs> I watched all three of those, and then we watched one, two, and three, what well i mean yeah two and three sucked but <laughs> so you went back and binged um yeah, we binged yeah. so that everything you could mm-hmm. you could get caught up kind of yeah so i don't know i just fell in love with the, story. the music the music Sorry. yeah the music yeah. really i love the music it's amazing oh yeah and then all the special effects they're just so cool so i never i've never seen anything like yeah, that we, those are basically our first really adult movies instead of you know cartoons little kid stuff mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and it just I went back and watched all the documentaries for the films. And yeah, it made me interested. Interviews, cast, crew, writers, director. Everything. Wow, everything. I have a question. Uh, 
for the wait, women. Wait, wait. Oh, you have another question? Let, let Joey say. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Joey, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, I, I can't remember how old I was when I saw episode four, but I know episode four was the first one I saw, but I saw it on VHS. So that, that should tell you how long ago it was. Um, but I saw the original version. Um, and I immediately fell in love because my mom and dad grew up watching those movies and everything. Mm-hmm. And so they, they were like, okay, you know, f- once, you know, our children are old enough, we, we got to put them in front of the TV and, and have them uh, watch Star Wars. Um, and so it's become like a, a, a big part of my upbringing. Um, and I, whenever the sequels came out in the theaters, I know my mom and I went to see episode two, like twice in theaters. We went to the midnight premiere of episode three, which I do agree. The prequels were not mm-hmm. as good as the, uh, as the original three. <laughs> um, but, uh, but still at, at such a young age, like any star Wars movie, any star Wars, anything just blew my mind. So, but I, I, I wanted to ask about these remakes that, uh, that are happening. Does it offend you that that the Ghostbusters were mostly guys when you watched the movie? Did it offend you in any way? And that the girl was the secretary when you saw the first Ghostbusters? Have they even seen the first Ghostbusters? Have you not oh, seen yeah. it? No. Oh, I've yeah. Never yeah. Seen it. Oh, I love the original okay. Ghostbusters. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so anyway, so the, now, they've, now they have the, the remake, and it's all women. Does that make you feel empowered or like, yes, all these women are going to fight the ghost and now that it's going to be all women because women are but be- i mean do you you get that feeling from it when you see them um i think sometimes i know for now reasons a lot of the there's a lot of talk about feminism and equal pay and everything but i feel like i don't want to say anything wrong here but <laughs> if it's you can't, not this with, is Cindy's you show. can't this is <laughs> <laughs> i think if it if they take their own twist on it i feel like it, it'll be cool but to keep with tradition a lot of people may not like it because it's non-traditional it's so different from the other ones and right they have a i don't know routine or something that people may not like it because it's all women because it's different but yeah but the actresses from, are pretty funny yeah i like the actresses yeah. so but i they think yeah, done, maybe do, yeah it does I, seem empowering to most people to a lot of women really adding one guy chris hemsworth so now that was their best decision that was their best decision i may go see it just for him being in it well what's funny cindy is the turnaround on this movie is they try to keep away from stereotypes but but in its own mm -hmm. twisted funny way they created more stereotypes in this film so they have the big heavy sassy black woman stereotype Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then they have the chiseled good-looking guy who mm-hmm. plays? I don't know if he has. He's going to have a romantic role. He's and the then, secretary, right? Secretary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's the secretary. But then you have, and this is <laughs> this is why I hate all uh, one gender movies, like because it, it's going to become a woman stereotype with what women do, and the comedy is going to be very centralized about women. Yeah. And to me, and like I told you guys before, and I know y'all, this is probably a difference why people like Star Wars a lot more than the current big movies coming out that are you know very sci-fi very because it creates more the the theme and the plot is very individual Mm -hmm. and i think with ghostbusters focusing too heavy on this and the comedy you're going to lose sight of what make ghostbusters really great right Mm -hmm. and you guys growing up and seeing all these cool things that's why star wars still sticks with y'all i think would y'all identify because like why isn't avatar great Mm -hmm. like loved as much as Star Wars. Yeah, that's true. Well, it doesn't have a history, and, it, and Star Wars was smart because it came out with so many, and you, and you were following a story, so you were being introduced and all that. But uh, last night, I, I forgot to mention that uh, now you see me too. They introduce a new horseman, and I don't know if you know about the horseman, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, okay, so she, she comes out and she says, "We have this new." horseman and they are going it's a girl and she says yeah a woman yeah you got a woman horseman so they had to play that up real big too i just hate you know for them to do things like here's the token woman or now we're going to shift this over and show how strong the women can be and how stupid the men are and that kind of thing and and to blatantly say we're going to do another one and it's going to be all women like why those three those women are so talented funny and all that they could have their own show with their own you know well the same thing goes for men too something else like most movies that have all men is like for example the expendables i mean that movie is just testosterone filled <laughs> yeah and, it's filled exactly. to the brim and uh and also with like oceans 11 and things like that right and so it's just it's unfortunate that those kind of movies portray portray those kind of things with with genders but it's so certain silly. movies like star wars i think star wars handles w- women and men very well 
He's just got to um, keep getting back to Star Wars. Well, it's, it's a trying to work that back. It, no, it's a well balanced movie. You got yeah. Luke and Leia. That's a brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Who you know the kiss in the first one was a little weird, <laughs> but uh, they didn't know they were brother one. and sister. So I mean, yeah. we, we got to give them the one well, the fourth one. If episode you want to get no, episode five, second. They kissed in New Hope at the they, very end. No. <laughs> Your challenge? No, no, they didn't. No, no, yeah. because at the very episode end. five. No, 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 no because it? the end of episode four is the awards ceremony. Yeah, yeah. And they just like stand at the crowds and like Chewbacca screaming at them. They kiss <laughs> when um, Luke comes back. From we all know that kiss. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that? triggers people now. It's like, <laughs> uh, bad times, bad times. <laughs> I I love that. So uh, okay, so there's a challenge, and and Richard is you know quickly looking it up to make sure that uh, you're right. He has to fact check, fact. Che- That's so bad because he fact fact checks me, fact checks me all the time. And I had to make sure he was saying the right word. No, they passionately kissed in Empire Strikes Back, but they did kiss not passionately in. So it was more like a brother when, sister when type. In the in the right? fourth one, yeah, when boy. they for, when they kiss each other, she kisses everybody. <laughs> so, she kissed everybody. You're okay. right about the passionate kiss. I give you that. <laughs> that was a little awkward. After <laughs> yeah. Well, but. I saw uh, in a uh, documentary about um, deleted scenes uh, in Empire Strikes Back that George Lucas was planning on taking it farther than just the just the passionate kiss in Empire Strikes Back. But then he was like, no, because when people look back after it's announced that they're brother and sister, they're going to be like, man, those really? movies are completely oh, messed up. Man. And so... Um, and so he he planned it. Is this is in a deleted scene where they're you know starting to go further than a than a than a kiss, and C three PO walks in on him, <laughs> just completely like <laughs> that would do it. Interrupts him. So I'm like, at kill least, the mood. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the movie has a lot of medieval throwbacks, you know, to the 1400s, the 1700s. That's so true, yeah. that's what they did back then. So why not? <laughs> but I mean, now it's taboo. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> see, you just cannot out nerd. Richard on this subject matter because he no, they're knows right everything. On the passion, I guess, but. He knows everything. That's why I'm so excited that you guys came up with that. So you really do, you really got it together. I appreciate that so much. Uh, listen, guys, we are getting close to the end of the end of the uh, show, right? Oh man! Look, he see, now it's one minute. It's okay for him <laughs> to talk and talk. I, now I got one minute. Uh, I want to tell everybody that uh, next week we got a fun lineup uh, coming up. Lieutenant Bob Berry is going to be here with uh, Deanie Harmon on Monday, and we do our our next installment of the Who Done It series. And he lays out all the crimes, uh, the clues to the crime that he came upon. These are real crimes that happened in this area, but they're out of the statute of limitations, so we can talk about them. And he gives us all the clues that he he sees. He sets up sets it up what the scene was and then we get to ask questions like a detective to find out who did it and what we who we think might be you know the uh, the actual perp but uh, he gives us all that and we uh we have so much fun asking questions uh because we watch so much of the of the forensic files and all that i love that so uh it's a lot of fun that's on monday tuesday we have craig campobella campobella you know how fun is that to say his name um and uh he has just finished you know y'all have seen the uh the lady liberty that gold statue in front of the spirit of texas bank as you come down 105 mm-hmm. he's right across the street he's the one who um, who sculpted that and it's real gold uh, outer leaf uh, from italy that's on that statue it's just a beautiful gorgeous well he was commissioned to do red duke for uh an unveiling and it's a, a bust of red duke and they're over there right now i mean you can go into his studio and he, you can see what's getting ready to be placed in the uh at, at the wing of the red duke uh trauma center and so we're going to have him on he's going to talk all about that and then uh wednesday we got kirk murphy we're going to talk food he is the general manager of golden corral and i want to know all about how that all happens because i love golden corral it's the best buffet in the usa okay guys uh we'll see you next week have a great weekend go make somebody happy and you'll be happier i just i I guarantee i just guarantee it and uh, we will see you monday Uh, through friday 10 to 11 next week everybody gonna be with us say yay say bye everybody all the interns that were here yes yes say bye 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 Bye, joy bye kalina and bye kiara y'all have a great weekend thanks for checking out this production on old star community radio montgomery county's radio station for more information on this show and other shows on lone star 
Check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Yeah, contact Dick Schistler at dick at irlonestar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.